Hi, I'm Adam, and I'm here to give you a tour of the main features of UCLIF, the EU Chemicals Legislation Finder. UCLIF is an online service that enables you to find comprehensive information about the different obligations that apply to your substance in accordance with some of the EU regulations and directives concerning chemicals. It is funded by the European Commission's COSME program and powered by us here at ECHA. UCLIF data has been integrated with our chemicals database that also includes publicly available information from the pieces of legislation managed by us, such as the REACH and Biocidal Products Regulations. Note that UCLIF only includes legislation that has already been adopted. For more information about EU law, the EURLEX website includes all the EU treaties, directives, regulations, decisions, and consolidated pieces of legislation. Now let's take a closer look at UCLIF. There are two ways you can access UCLIF data, either directly on our home page by searching for a substance in our chemicals database, or through the UCLIF landing page. Let's start with the UCLIF landing page. On our home page, under each item in the legislation menu, you will find a UCLIF link. As you can see, there is also a substance search here. I will show you how you can do a substance-specific search later on in the video. Here, you can also find a list of all the currently available legislation included in UCLIF, grouped under nine different categories, such as chemical control, exposure to chemical agents, and food safety. When you expand each category, you are presented with the different legislation profiles together with a brief description of what they cover. Let's click on one. A legislation profile opens where you can find a sidebar on the left. It helps you navigate through a variety of information such as the scope and related exemptions. It also has links to a legislation summary and full legal texts on the Eurolex website. The sidebar on the right includes specific substance lists relevant to this legislation. Under See Also, you can find other relevant legislation profiles that belong to the same category. Now let's click on a substance list. Here is a table of substances associated with this particular legislation. There are several actions you can take. By clicking on the arrows under each column, you can filter the list by alphabetical order or from high to low values and vice versa. This eye icon indicates that there are more details to see for the list entry. A useful way to filter is by expanding the filter the list heading. Here, you can type in the name, EC or CAS number in the substance identifier search box. Then press filter. You can also export your search results into various formats such as Excel, CSV, or XML. If the list has more than 50 substances, you can jump to next and last substance entries in the table. Now you can either go back to the legislation profile or continue browsing by clicking on the substance name to learn more about the substance and view its info card. To help you understand what the different column headings and icons mean, Simply hover your mouse over the bold text to get a short description. Now let's click on a substance. This takes you to a substance info card, one of the most used features on our website. Some of you are already familiar with them, but now they have been enriched with Euclid data and new functionalities. One of them is a tab called Regulatory Context that directs you to the piece of legislation under UCLIF. So let's click on Other Chemical Legislation. Here, you can browse through all the legislation that regulate the substance you searched for. A yellow or red icon on the right means that there is a restriction on the use or a ban of the substance under the related legislation.
This Obligations or OBL icon gives you access to the Substances Regulatory Obligations page. You can also access it through the Regulatory Obligations box under Key Data Sets. The Substance Regulatory Obligations page contains a combination of the descriptions of the obligations associated with a substance that is included in a legislation list. Remember to make use of the tooltips that give additional information related to the obligations for your substance. You can access Euclid data also through our advanced search. This takes you to an expandable panel where you can search using different criteria. The regulatory context block has been extended with all the pieces of legislation covered by Euclid and displays all the categories I showed you earlier. Before we end the video, there is another way to access Euclid via the Information on Chemicals section. If you have created an ECA account, by signing in, you can access additional features such as saving your favorite search criteria and storing a list of favorite substances. So, let's quickly recap what Euclid can do for you. You can search by substance to find its characteristics and the pieces of legislation that regulate it, together with the obligations they entail. If you have a question about your substance or obligations, Euclid has a dedicated regulatory help desk that is there to help you. You can access it through our contact forms. The easiest way is through our front page. By clicking on Contact, you will be redirected to a list of web forms. Just select Euclid. This pops up the Euclid contact form. By selecting the drop down menu, you can choose the request type. The first one, Chemical Information Published on ECA's website, refers to any clarification on the content published on the Euclid pages. By selecting the option, new fields appear. Information that is mandatory for you to fill in is marked with a red star. So in this case, for example, I would need to specify which page this particular question concerns. You can also choose a category based on the nine categories that we have on the Euclid landing page and go as deep as a specific legislation. You can also optionally provide some additional data like EC, list numbers, cast numbers, substance names, and last but not least, as a minimum, the web address which you can copy from your address bar in your browser so that we can assist you in the proper page. Then you have an open field to type your question. There is also an option to add an attachment. In order to submit, you need to fill in your contact details and confirm with the CAPTCHA before submitting it to us. Next is regulatory advice. Here, you can ask a question about the content of Euclid legislation and or related regulatory obligations. Here again, the fields change slightly, but you at least have to specify a legislation that you have a question about. Then you provide your question in the text box, add an attachment, fill in your contact details as before, and submit it to us. The last option, technical support, allows you to send us questions about specific issues in browsing the Euclid web pages. Slightly different fields here, you just provide your question, you can add up to three attachments, fill in your contact details, and submit your information to us here at ECHO. Remember that you can also use the CA problem or have feedback buttons while navigating through Euclid to submit your question. This brings us to the end of our tutorial. I hope you have learned more about the many possibilities available to you when using Euclid. Thank you and goodbye.